wonderful the way you put this party together. Did you do pinatas when you were a kid? <laughs> I suppose. I can't remember that far back. <laughs> Sugar. Hey, Billy. Yeah. Are well, you ready to get wet? I guess. Hey, that's a good spot. Sure. Right about there, yeah? Okay. Hey, kids, who wants to go first? Hit the mean guy. <laughs> well, let's see. How about the birthday girl go? The birthday girl? All right. Here, let's give it a shot. Oh, this will be okay because she can't throw. Oh. oh, not quite real good. I'm still mostly dry. See that? Oh, see there? I'm going to be dry all day long. What? Hey, no secrets. Hey, wait, what are you doing? No, that's cheating. Better not. Big trouble. I mean it. Big trouble. Don't you do it. Don't you do it. No. Oh. 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 Honey, did you call the kids in? I think we're ready. Okay. Okay. I'll get this. Oh, you got it? Yeah, I got it. I got it. I got it. Okay. Hey, Billy. <laughs> Did you let her do that? No. <laughs> you are a good sport. Hey, everybody, it's cake and ice cream time. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to Jennifer. Happy birthday to you. All right. Get together with your sister. There you go, sweetie. Cool. Hey, this one's just like Kara's. Yeah, that's, that's right. right. On Kara's seventh birthday, we gave her one just like it. When you wear it next to your heart, I want you to remember that God is watching you and he's guiding you and protecting you. Well, it's been a wonderful day, but it's time to go to bed now. Shall have a softball game and then we're gonna go see the movie. So I have to eat first. We have time to eat our breakfast, sweetheart. Okay. <laughs> Jim Richards, you be a good example. <laughs> Because we're in the woods? Mm-hmm. But why are the trees pink? They're cotton candy trees. Oh! Well, what are these hands reaching down? Those are God's hands reaching down from heaven to give us a great big hug. <laughs> oh, how sweet. Here, let me see it. Oh, honey. <gasps> Sorry. It's all right. No biggie. You're growing so fast, you little weed. Weed? I'm not a weed. I'm a flower. Yeah, it's a very pretty little flower. And you just grow so much every day. I love watching you grow up. It makes me really happy to be your mom. Okay, okay. You know what we need to do today? We need to go get you a dress for your piano recital. That way you can impress all the little boys. Mom. Well, at any rate, I do want you to look really special for your first piano recital. Okay, but not for the boys. Okay. <laughs> Whoa, these are pretty. Oh, now, how about this one? I like this one. Oh, and this one, this one's really pretty. You know what, I don't think this one's the right size. Tell you what, um, why don't you go try that one on? I'm gonna go over there and see if I can find you some lacy socks to match, okay? Okay. See you later, alligator.
Jennifer, which one are you in? Jennifer, come on, quit playing game. Oh, you're in here. Excuse me, I'm sorry. Jennifer? 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 Ma'am, Jennifer, can I help you? Is something wrong? Yes, my daughter's missing. I had her go try the dress. I'm sure she's in the store. Let me page her. What's her name? Jennifer. Jennifer. Richard. She wouldn't have left me. She this is not like her. Not like her. Jennifer Richards to the children's department, please. Jennifer Richards to the children's department. Really wrong. She's just the dresser in the middle of the floor there. I mean she always she goes and tells me when she's pulling so just got on the air. Obviously, the girl's still missing. Yeah, the mother left the girl to change while she came back. Her daughter was missing. We've uh, done an extensive search of the store, and she's not there unless she's hiding. I just checked the girl's room. She's not in there. What do you think? She's hiding in the house here somewhere? You just need to be sure she's not. My daughter could be out there in trouble and you guys are wasting time in the house. You need to get out there and do your job and find her. Mr. Richards, this is a waste of time. Mr. Richards, you said you had another daughter. Where is she? No, Chief, nobody saw her leave. Uh -uh. No, she's not at the mall. We've been through the whole mall. No, we're at the house now. Well, I think it's a little early for a statewide ATL. Send two cars down to help patrol the area. I'll get word out to all the officers on both shifts and contact the local media. After that, all we can do is wait. for several hours and police are now asking for your help. Jennifer Richards was shopping with her mother in a local department store when she disappeared. She is seven years old, four foot two, weighs about 65 pounds and has a long run.
Has anything on you occurred at home, like a fight with her sister, or maybe some trouble at school? I'm sorry, Mrs. Richards. We think it's possible your daughter ran away. This is ridiculous. You don't know her. You don't know us. I'm not trying to pass judgment on you and your family, Mrs. Richards. But given the circumstances, it's the most plausible explanation. Get out. No, wait a minute. Both of you, get out. Sorry. I'm going to call the police chief and get someone on this case who can find my daughter. You are wasting time. I'm wasting time. Look, there's a reason why we're Campbell, thinking this. Don't you want to know? Come on, Emma. Let's go. Wait. Wait. Anything you know I want to hear. I'll come right to the point. We've got a witness. We talked to a clerk in the store that saw a little girl walk in the woods behind the mall. Is he absolutely sure it was her? No. But the time frame fits. And frankly, he's the only witness we got. Look, if somebody took your daughter out of the store against her will, nobody saw anything unusual. No yelling, no screaming. Just her dress on the floor, she dropped it and ran off. I could see why you might think that, but... Believe me, I'm her mother. She would not run away. She was excited to be there. She was picking out a dress. I mean, she was happy. I'm going to keep every possibility open. Every cop on the street's got his eye out for her. And we'll search everywhere, including the woods. like God's really with us right now. I never really felt that way before. No. No. You know what I think we should do right now? I think we should pray. I don't know if I can pray. Why not? I love her, Mom. I really do. I prayed that I'd get more of the attention. But I didn't want this to happen. Oh, honey, this didn't happen because of you. It's not your fault. Kara, put your hand right over your heart. And I want you to feel deep down inside. I just know she's going to be back. And she's going to be up here and she's going to be singing and laughing and telling stories. We're going to be one big happy family, I promise you. I promise you. I miss her. I miss her too. I talked to search and rescue. We're going to send the dogs up over that bridge about a mile back. Are we going to go join them then? And guards going to be here pretty soon. Let's wait for them. Hey, did you see the paper this morning? I got quoted. If we don't find her soon, we'll have to assume the worst. I'm sure that made everybody feel better. What should I have said? Don't worry, folks. We'll find her. You could have said something hopeful, at least. Like what? I don't know. I wish we had something. The kid just vanished. Vanished into thin air. Now there's your quote. We've been out here for days searching these woods, and we haven't found a thing. You know, that was a false lead. It was the only lead we've got. Besides, if we don't cover this ground with a dog... It's the easy way out. You know, nobody wants to face up to the truth. And that is that a little girl was abducted from Rapid City, South Dakota. 
Now, if we don't start facing those facts and start looking in that direction, then we're just wasting our time. But if you want to keep looking out here, I guess that's what we're going to do. Now, this was a stranger abduction. She was dead the night she disappeared. Come on, Matt, you know the statistics. That's why I keep hoping she ran away. At least that way she has a chance. I refuse to give up. I've seen some incredible things on this job. And we can always keep praying for a miracle. Dear Lord, please give us the strength to make it through every day and, and the faith to know that you're with us and, and with our Jennifer through all the pain and the doubts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We know she's going to be back. Our faith is strong. Hi, Sharla. We just stopped by to let you know that we're thinking about you and we want to bring you a few things to share. Just let you know that you're in our thoughts and in our prayers. And if there's anything at all that we can do, please don't hesitate to call. Thanks. Appreciate it. Hey, Billy. You got a minute? Oh, hey, buddy. I was wondering if you don't mind if you can hang some of these flyers up for me at the plant. Well, sure, absolutely. I really appreciate your help. And would you like to come in and sit down for a little bit? Ah, uh, well, I, I better not. I gotta get going. Hey, uh, thanks again. Glad to do it. I didn't know you'd be out. I picked up some groceries for you. Well, since you're here, why don't you just open up your trunk and we'll put them right in. Look, it's really sweet of you, but you can't afford this. Sharla, I'm your friend. Look, I'm not gonna have you spending your entire check on my family. Now, how much do I owe you? Brian, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, it's I'm just. Right. I know what it's like to lose someone you love. She's not dead, Brim. I just want you to know that if you need someone to talk to, come here. Hmm? Okay, thank you. Goodbye. I suppose they have any new leads yet? No, nothing. At least they're still looking. Too bad you weren't. What? Looking. Watching her. Watching Jennifer? Would it have been too much to walk with her to the dressing room? <laughs> what were you thinking letting her go off by herself like that? Okay, kids, and our fifth rule in stranger danger to help you keep from being abducted is to learn to say no loud and clear. When we say no to a stranger, we don't just say no. You need to say no. OK, 
Okay, we're going to practice that. Okay, on three, I want you to give me your best no, your loudest no. Okay, one, two, three. No! Very good. I bet everybody in the block can hear you. And that's the way you want to say no when you say no to a stranger. Tough habit to break, huh? I sure picked the worst time to try. I haven't touched one of these in three months. Right now, one of them would taste so good. No, I didn't come out here to bug you. Actually, wanted to bring you the list you wanted. Pedophiles and sex offenders. My favorite kind of criminals. Let's start from the top. Simple interviews. Somebody squirms, we dig deeper. That's what we're going to go off of? If somebody squirms? How are you supposed to know if the guy's telling the truth or not? What if he's a good actor? Could he act his way through a lie detector test? That's pretty scary. No, the scariest criminal is one that doesn't need to act and doesn't think he's guilty. Detective Weber? Okay, thank you. Goodbye. Who's that? She said the cheekbones need to be a little higher. Can fix that? Miss Sampson, would you have Mrs. Sampson tell us what she saw? Okay. I went to the mall and I was looking at some material for my craft class. And I was looking at all the different sales and I was trying to save some money. They don't want to hear all that. Get to the point. No. Okay. I went into a store and I was looking at some sweaters and I saw a little girl leading a blind man to the door. I wish I could have known that that man was going to take the little girl. There's no way you could have known. How's it going, then? Well, let's see. That's him. That's him. Look at him, the man. That's a good picture of the man that took the little girl. Yeah. Very yeah. scary. Do you recognize the face? We have a woman who believes she saw this man with your daughter on the day she disappeared. We also believe he's pretending to be blind. Do you recognize him? No, I, I've never seen this man before.
So, uh, how long are we going to hang around here anyway? Yeah, maybe we stay the rest of the day. It's a good place to people watch. Yeah. Might even come back tomorrow. Why? Do you just think we're wasting our time? And what are the odds that he's going to try the same stunt again? I don't know, but I'm not going to be the one to give him another chance. I don't understand how a human being can be so sick. <laughs> Satan rules, partner. This guy's just business as usual for that old boy. Sorry, I don't believe in the devil. Oh, you don't believe the devil walks the streets, huh? Especially not in a little town like Rapid. Tell you what, I'll give you a few more years on this job. Next time you scrape some poor, drunk, dead teenager out of the inside of her car, or watch some guy blow his wife away, well, son, you just tripped over him. Personally, I just think people control their own lives. I don't see a guy with a horns and a tail controlling people's lives. You know what I mean? Temple. Mr. Blake, you have to understand, this has been frustrating for us as well. We've got a witness that gives us a composite drawing that looks like you exactly. If you guys have me confused with somebody else. Possibly. But that's why I want to talk to you for a little while. That is all right, isn't it? Yeah, sure. <sighs> he checks out. Turns out he's been blind since childhood. That's his little daughter, Emily. He has a wife, Cynthia. She's pretty mad. She's coming over right now. You know, I think we're missing something here. I think we have got the guy in the composite drawing. How so? Mr. Blake, do you ever come shopping by yourself? No. I always go with my wife or a friend, or sometimes my daughter and I take the bus. Was there a time when you got separated recently and needed help getting out of the store? Specifically, Allen's Clothing Store on the afternoon of Friday, August the 8th? I can't remember the date of the store, but, uh, yeah. Yeah, I got uh, turned around a couple of weeks ago. Uh, I was with my daughter, Emily, and she, she left me for some reason. Uh, well, I, I thought I could find my way to the front door, but uh, I just got turned around. But finally, I uh, found my way out, and that was it. How did you get back? Did someone help you? Yeah. Yeah, a little girl. She helped me find the exit. That's all I know. Can I go now? Listen, I want to thank you and your daughter both for your cooperation this afternoon. And I apologize for the misunderstandings. Come on, honey. Let's go. Where do we go from here? Oh, God, please, please let him go. Let's go meet Ma. Wait a minute. I just remembered something. When we got to the door, she... She said hello to somebody. Somebody she recognized. She said, Hi.
look who's here. Oh. Here comes. Oh. 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 I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May God bless and protect this baby. May God bless and protect this baby. God. I had to bury my beautiful baby today. That is the hardest thing I have ever had to do. And I don't understand. you. I believed in you. I believed you'd protect her. Ready to go? Yeah, let's go. This place gives me the creeps. I can't close this case. Not yet. What are you looking for? Answers, resolution. The reason why a seven-year-old girl was found dead in the middle of the woods. I didn't think that was still a question. She fell 13 feet from that ledge and broke her neck. Yes. She was running. Why? She was scared. It was getting dark. We don't know the reasons why she was out here, but it wasn't because she was abducted. No one was chasing her. How do you know? The autopsy report. There were no signs of abuse. And why are you changing your mind anyways? From the very beginning of this case, you said she ran away. The blind man she helped in the mall, the person she recognized outside. There's more pieces to this than we've put together. If we close this case now, we could be letting a murderer go free. Gary. What about her necklace? A little gold cross. It wasn't on her body, and it hasn't been found anywhere since. Look, Gary, just hold it. There's no conflict here. There's two miles from the mall to hear. It could have fallen off anywhere. The person she met outside of the mall, the one she recognized, it could have been a friend. Someone who egged her on to run away. We don't know all the details, but we know enough. Don't drag this out. If you start chasing phantoms, it's going to hurt everyone. Let it 
kau been a while. It's good to see you again. I'm sorry about what happened. I guess God just needed a little girl in heaven. So where's your wife? Is she, she didn't come today. How do you do it, Bran? How do you get through each day? Oh, it's not always easy. I pray a lot. Sometimes when I'm really missing them, I, uh, I hold their picture to my heart and I pretend that we're still together, we're still a family, and you know what? We still are. I will never forget them. You don't have to forget about them to get over the pain. There's some pain that'll never go away. It's just the way it is. Sometimes I hurt so bad. I think my heart's just going to break right in two. And that's when I ask God for comfort, and he's there for me. He puts his arms around me, and he comforts me. I'm not too happy with God right now. Tell you the truth, my faith is shattered. I'm not even sure he exists. Oh, I was angry with God for a long time. I couldn't understand how he could, how he could let the accident happen. Why didn't he give my husband the strength to steer away? Why didn't he protect my son when that car sideswiped him? I was angry with myself too. See, they'd gone out for pizza that night and I wanted some stamps. So I asked them to swing by the supermarket and to pick them up for me. It wasn't urgent. I didn't need those stupid stamps. Oh, Brad. You know that drunk driver? He was killed in the accident too. I was so angry with him. Death was too good for him. I envisioned his soul burning in hell. That's where he belongs. No. I felt that way too for almost two years after the accident. And then something happened to me. 
something I'll never forget. I was sitting in the park one day. I was just listening to the wind blow through the trees. I realized someone was sitting down next to me. It's a beautiful day, isn't it? Sun feels good on my face. You're happy then? I'm okay. S something wrong? A few years back, a young man was killed in a car wreck. He'd been drinking. His car hit another, and two people were killed, a father and a son. That young man was my son. I'm Charles' mother. My name is Anne. I don't, maybe I, maybe I raised him wrong and I wasn't enough of a mother for him. But ever since that day, I've carried this pain that somehow I was responsible for those deaths. It saddens me to know how much hurt you feel, how much you've been through. But please, he was a good kid, and I loved him very much. It's been a weight on my heart for so very long, and I, I need for you to know how sorry I am for everything that's happened to you. Can you, can you please forgive me for not being the greatest mom, but more importantly, can you please forgive my son if he was here right now? He would want to know that he was forgiven. Something inside me lifted that day. Anger I'd been carrying around with me for two years started to disappear. And I forgave that woman and I forgave her son. That's when the healing really began. Forgiving him allowed me to rebuild my faith in God. And little by little, I started to pick up the pieces. sweetheart. I don't think spring is ever going to come. I miss you. We all miss you so much. I can't make myself understand what happened. It makes no sense to me why you're gone. You should be here. I want to check on you at night and make sure you're sleeping safely in your bed. I want to tuck you in. I want to read your stories. We should be building a snowman today.
just probably being selfish. I can't even begin to imagine what you went through. How scared you must have been. I'm sorry. Mommy is so sorry. I'm supposed to deal with all this hurt. Gary, there you are. You wanted to see me? What's going on? I'm thinking about closing the Richards case. Well, good. Is there a reason we kept it open this long? I don't know. Nothing specific. My gut's just bothering me. Take something for it. It's time to get over this. I just find it hard to believe that Jennifer wandered off on a whim. I'd like to find that kid she talked to. The whole thing just doesn't seem right. How could it seem right, Gary? She's gone. It's over. Look, nobody wants to see it in this way. Nobody. But th there comes a point where you gotta let all it go. All right, all right. I just want to tell the family in person. You don't have to go. No, no, we started this together. Let's end it together. I'll meet you over the house, what, 15 minutes? Hi, honey. Hmm. You don't feel too hot. How's your tummy? Not so good. Do we have any tummy medicine? No, I think we're out. Do you want me to get you some? And some soda? Soda sounds good. Okay. Hmm. I'm gonna have to call somebody to go get you some, all right? So I'll be right downstairs. You just stay here and rest. Bill, this is Sharla. Oh, hi, Sharla. Say, how are you doing? I'm, I'm fine. Um, Kara's not feeling very well today, though, and I was wondering if you could go to the store and pick up a few things for... Jim's out of town, and I just don't want to leave her alone. Bill? No, no, I, I understand, but I, I'm sorry. I need to stay here and keep an eye on my mother. Mm. Well, that's fine, then. I can call someone else. How about, that? How, about if, uh, how about if I come over and watch her while you go to the store? I, I, you're just right across the street. That way I can keep an eye on my mother, too. And, and watch your mom. I mean, that's fine. I understand. No, it's no problem. I'll see you in 30 seconds. Goodbye. Honey, Billy's going to come over and watch you while I go get your stuff, okay? Yes. Yeah. yeah. All right. Okay. Hi, Charlotte. Thanks for coming over. I really appreciate it. You bet. It's no problem. Kara's upstairs in her room. This shouldn't okay. take me but a few minutes to go get that stuff. No sweat. Take your time. Okay, thanks. Kara, Bill's here, so I'm going to go get your stuff now. I'll be back in a few minutes. You bet. Just 
Hey there. Where's your water? Thanks. Say, hey, Karen, how would you like to go for some ice cream? It always makes me feel better when I'm sick, and I know the fresh air will do you some good. Mm, I not like that, though. Well, actually, it was her idea. Well, we thought of it together as she was leaving, but I'm sure it'll be okay. Really? Sure. Why don't you throw some clothes on and we'll leave, okay? Okay. Okay. Are you just about ready, sweetie? Almost. I still got to my shoes. Well, hurry up. We don't want to take too long. Black cherry. Popcorn regular cone. Regular cone. I think I know the place they can hook us right up with that. Okay? Over here. Excuse me. Uh... Tara, are your parents at home? Mom went to the store. She'll be back in a little bit. Where are you guys off to? Billy's taking me out for ice cream to help me feel better. That's right. Uh, come on, Carol, let's go. Wait a minute. I have a message for the family. Uh, could I leave it with you? Yeah, sure, go ahead. Well, let's go in the house. Well, actually, we're kind of in a hurry, so either give me the message now or wait till Charlotte gets home. Sir, I think we could talk more easily in the house. I don't understand what you're talking about. There's nothing to discuss, right? You either have a message Sir. or you don't. Sir, we gotta go. Quick, Kara, get out of the car. Dispatch 42. Suspect fled in a late model red Bronco. Hostage on board. West on Skyline Drive. 24 to dispatch. I am in the area. Request code. Don't you think? I couldn't stand to look at him any longer. You up for a little trip? It's all right. You're safe with me. Kara? Okay, if I head west on Floorman, I might be able to cut this guy off. 24, go for it. I'll try and keep him in visual range. Remember, you got a kid in that car. Try not to kill anybody along the way. Give me car six, ETA, two minutes. Come around, please. I want to go home. Man, believe that guy. He just had to get on my back. I mean, all I was trying to do was take you out for some ice cream and have some fun, just you and me. Please, you're scaring me. You scare pretty easy then, don't you? Spikes on him anyhow. Copy. Well, over the car. Twenty-four. Copy. Can I go down and set up the spikes? You guys set up the funnel. Yeah.
set. Spikes are set. here Shh. I know your birthday was yesterday but this is an extra special surprise and we wouldn't want to spoil it would we I just hope your mom told me to meet her in the right place because well I don't see anybody here oh there we go okay what? I think it's time we blindfolded you young lady
Go. submitted my report. This department's not going to give you much more than a slap on the wrist. Not that you don't deserve more. You know, I'm real disappointed in a guy I asked for for a partner. So how long are they going to keep in here for? I don't know. They bruised my spine, so it could be a couple days. Looks like you bruised your ego, too. Where'd we go wrong? What? This is stupid. The guy did the same thing twice with the family. I mean, how come we didn't see it coming? It was a real tough case. Lots of emotion, some false leads. A little complicated. We didn't catch it because sometimes these things don't make any sense. If you're trying to get inside Billy's head, Figure out what he was thinking and why he did what he did. You'd get lost. And both times he acted on impulse. He didn't follow Jennifer out to the mall. It was just blind chance that he saw her there. He saw the opportunity and he took it. No thoughts of the consequences. And then he hid behind that friendly face. And not just from those around him, but from himself too. Don't tell me the devil made him do it. Influenced or not, Billy made a choice. Deep down inside himself, he knew what he was doing. And he'll be judged for that. Mr. and Mrs. Richards, what do you feel about the conviction? Do you feel Jim, necessary, Jim, sir? Okay. Folks, if you could just back up a minute. Uh, the Richards family has asked me to request that uh, the press not ask him any questions this afternoon. They do not intend to make a statement at this time. Um, on behalf of the state's attorney's office, though, we're pleased with the plea bargain Mr. Anderson has made. He's going to be sentenced in about a month, and we are going to seek the maximum sentence available. Now, if you have any additional questions, I'll try to take them at this time. Mrs. Well, Richards, do you feel more at peace now that your daughter's killer has been convicted? Mrs. Fol Richards. Folks, I, I asked for no questions for the family. Now, if you have any more, I'll try to handle them for you, okay? Do you feel justice was served? Uh, yeah, I think we got a fair plea bargain. I think there's a, a strong likelihood for a real severe sentence in the case. And we obviously saved uh, the family uh, having to go through a long, traumatic trial. Just a baby. <laughs> she had her whole life ahead of her. You're supposed to be a father who loves and cares for his children. You didn't have to let him take her away. Why did you? Why did you have to die frightened and alone? <laughs> Didn't 
you love my daughter? Why didn't you love her? Please forgive me for my foolishness. I thought she was mine forever. She was always yours. Thank you. Thank you for showing me that she's alive with you and for the promise that, that one day we'll be together again. You better take off, big shot. Give me a kiss. Wait a minute. Do you have your homework? Do you have your recess pass? Do you have your lunch ticket? Hmm? Do you have all your pencils? I know the journey ahead of me will not be easy. I am not sure if I'm ready to forgive. But have mercy on me. Oh Lord, lead my heart to understanding. And help me to rest in the comfort of your loving arms.